Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the fifth in a series of video tutorials on how to learn to code in Unity 5. So this episode, we're going to be working on activating and deactivating um, components within actual objects in your scene via scripting. So as usual, we'll be writing in one script and then we'll be running the conversion into the other. So this episode, I think we'll start with C Sharp this time and then convert to JavaScript. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all these scripts we've written up till now. I'm going to create another folder to start with this um, episode. So I'm just going to create another folder and just call it scripts2. So the script is going to be, as I say, a C sharp script. And I'm going to call this something really, really simple that we can call, let's do um, component modify. So if you open the script up in whichever program you prefer, Mono Develop or Visual Studio, makes no difference whatsoever. So first things first, um, we're going to need to state a variable because we're going to be using this variable on um, a, a separate object, I should say. So once this is loaded, we're going to um, put in another cube into our scene and we're going to modify that one. So I'm going to delete the objects we have at the moment. So underneath here, it's got your usual public class. You need to state the first variable and I'm going to call it the cube because I'm going to use a cube for it. So we do public and it's game object. And as I say, I'm going to call it the cube. In fact, I'll put a capital T on there. The cube and semicolon. Now we won't be using uh, void update, so you can get rid of them couple of lines just there. We'll be using void start. So the way this works is we'll be stating that we're dealing with our variable, in this case the cube, and we'll be dealing with the fact we need to get a component of this particular cube. So let's head back into Unity and I'm going to delete the objects that we used in the last tutorial. And I'm going to insert 3D object, a new cube. So over here you can see the components that are already on there by default. You've got your box collider and mesh renderer. So let's turn off the box collider here without actually ticking this whatsoever. So in our script we just type the cube, which will reference that cube that we've just added when we add the script to the scene, dot get component. And after here, we need to state in spiky brackets which component we want to get. In this case, it's box collider. So that will become all one word, but still using the capitalization correctly. So box Collider, notice there's no space between box and collider. It still knows what you're trying to deal with. Then you need to close spiky bracket and then open close bracket. Dot enabled equals false. Semicolon, sorry. And save that script. Head back into Unity. Shouldn't get any errors. It's pretty simple standard script. And that's fine. So I'm going to game object, create empty. And now we have an empty game object, which I'm going to drag and drop this script onto. Back onto my cube. We need to make sure that is ticked there. And on the game object, we need to specify the cube as this cube here. So you can drag and drop that straight on there. Now I'm going to click back on the cube just so we can see it change. So we're not ticking it, we're not pressing a button here or anything. As soon as we press play, as soon as the script runs, the box collider turns itself off. That's all done via the script we've just written. Now it's not just um, a box collide that you can do. I'm going to put on, let's say, a script that we used in the last tutorial. So, or a tutorial before. So I'm going to put movement B 
in fact, no, I'm not going to use movement B. I'm going to use static script one and put it on the cube. And you'll notice that also um, turns into a component. So in the script, instead of box collider, you could always put, in this case, static script one. So let's try that. Static script one. And you'll notice it's turned blue. That realizes it's a component. So let's save that, head back to Unity. And when we press play again, the box collider will stay on. However, static script one will turn itself off. And there we go, the static script has been turned off. So the bottom line is, as long as you input in these spiky brackets, whatever the name of the component is, missing out all spaces and remembering capitalization, you can turn it on and off. So if it's been turned off by some other script and you wish this script to turn it on, all you would do is replace the false with true. So let's turn it off by default, this script. Save this script here. And when we press play, this script will turn itself on. There we go. So it's as simple as that. And as I say, any component within any game object can be changed, turned on or off, modified using this little line of code. So as always, we convert to the other language that we haven't used. So in this case, I'm now going to convert that to JavaScript. So right click, create JavaScript. And I'm going to call this uh, modify number two. So the JavaScript works in slightly the same way. Um, the way we actually type out the cube get component is slightly differently. So I'm going to get rid of everything we have there. And like we did in the first one, we need to set a variable. So in this case, var, I'm going to call it the cube again. And that will be of type game object. So this variable state here is the exact same as this variable state, um, statement here, both exactly the same. And I'm going to use a function start because we used void start in the other one. So function start open close bracket open spiky bracket and the line of code we need as i say is going to be virtually the same but slightly different around the box collider bit so the cube dot get component open bracket quote and then we put box collider and then dot enabled equals false and then close bracket cl close spiky bracket that um sorry close curly bracket that is and save so this line of code is the exact same in javascript as when we first typed this here and said false so if we head back to unity let's remove all the scripts we've added so let's remove that static script one Right click, remove component, head to game object, right click, remove component, and let's put modify number two onto game object, drag and drop our cube onto there. Let's go onto our cube and press play, and the box collider will turn itself off. There we go. So just because we've written this in, for example, JavaScript, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't turn off a C-sharp script. So to take this for example, on our cube, if we put the script um, static script one again, which is a C-sharp script onto cube, you'll see over here, it's there again. So back into our script, in our JavaScript, even though this is JavaScript, we can still state the C-sharp script just here. So static script one, save. That's the name of it, static script one. So just to reiterate there, this is a C-sharp script and we're running a JavaScript. When we press play, the JavaScript can then turn off the C-sharp script. 
all because that is a component. So one last example before we end the tutorial. I'm going to take off static script one and add component. And I'm going to put on there, let's do something um, miscellaneous. Let's do animator. So we now have animator on there. So all that means is just changing static script one to animator and saving the script. So then when we press play, the animator will turn itself off. And there we go, off. And that works in the C sharp script as well. So here in your spiky brackets, you would just put animator and that will then turn your animator off and any component can be used. So uh, that's how you can turn your uh, components in various different objects, not necessarily the object it's attached to, on and off. It's quite useful, for example, if you want um, intermittent box colliders on and off. So if you want your character to be able to walk through a uh, box collider, but then box collider to come on behind him so he can't go back, you would use this line of code to uh, enable and disable the box collider. So until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.